The Emperor's New Clothes. If there's one thing we'd like to share with you in this book, it's this. The biggest threat to successful brands today is their own success. Nokia was one of the biggest success stories at the turn of the millennium. From 2006 to 2008, Nokia ranked as the fifth most valuable brand in the world, according to the agency Interbrand. Nokia sat at the top table with Coca-Cola, IBM, Microsoft and GE. It was unique in being the only non-American company in the top five and the only mobile phone brand in the top 20. Samsung was number 21 at the time. Forbes magazine ran a feature in November 2007 asking, Nokia, 1 million customers, can anyone catch the cell phone king? The market was Nokia's for taking. The only brand that could catch and destroy the cell phone king was Nokia itself. To understand why it threw its lead, we need to first retrace its steps, understand the trajectory and work out how we don't repeat its failings. Nokia achieved global recognition through a highly effective marketing model, but the mistake was that the model it built its business on stopped being effective in 2006. The model we're talking about is the marketing model of the 20th century. Advertising, big ideas, brand stories, celebrities, visibility. It's a model shaped by ideas like positioning, awareness, brand management, it's also a model shaped by the writings of industry patriarchs like David Ogilvy. Ogilvy was a marketing genius. His ideas not only shaped advertising, but business in general in the 20th century. Time magazine named him as the most sought-after wizard in today's advertising industry. Others said of his publications, required reading for anyone in business. Media Week. Mandatory that everyone in advertising read Ogilvy's first book. Business Insider. The magic still lingers even in the 21st century. His old company, Ogilvy & Mather, recently scooped a prestigious Cannes Lion Grand Prix for its magical flying campaign for British Airways. Ogilvy's ideas cast a long shadow on the creative industry. That's why it's fitting to call his era the Ogilvy era. This is the era of Madison and Vine, Mad Men and TV ads from your childhood that you still remember today. So effective was the model of the era that its ideas are still ingrained in everything we do in the 21st century. How we recruit people in the industry, how we train them, how we measure them, how we think and talk about marketing, etc. It seems almost unquestionable, heretical even, that someone like us should dare challenge the status quo. That's why we wrote this book. Like the story of Hans Christian Andersen's The Emperor's New Clothes, where the emperor proudly parades naked in front of his coterie of advisers, believing his new suit is invisible only to the incompetent, it takes the naivety of a child to point out the obvious. Oi, advertising, you don't have any clothes on. If we weren't to dare, this book would never have been written. <laughs>